And number six. Uh, number six is to eat a health-promoting diet. And uh, you know, I, I lecture around the country mainly on uh, how to be healthy. And one of the key areas that I really focus on is, is teaching people what a healthy diet should consist of. And if you look at what Americans are filling themselves up on, it's little wonder that we're seeing this epidemic of diet-related diseases, heart disease, cancer, strokes, diabetes, obesity, depression. Uh, I throw all those in the diet-mediated category. We have to eat a more health-promoting diet. We have to take advantage of the bounty that's available to us. We live in a society where our food supply is the most magnificent food supply in the history of the world. Just go to any grocery store. Can you imagine uh, if, if you took someone from 2,000 years ago and you took them through one of our, our major supermarkets, they would, they would be amazed. And yet, you know, most Americans consume the same junk food over and over and over again. You have to achieve these seven keys to diet health. Number one, you have to eat to control blood sugar levels. Blood sugar volatility that we talked about earlier, that's the major fuel that leads to obesity and type 2 diabetes. We have to arrest that by avoiding sugar foods that are going to raise our uh, blood sugar levels very rapidly. So we have to eat to control blood sugar levels. Number two, we have to eat a rainbow diet. Now that doesn't mean more Fruit Loops and Fruity Pebbles. <laughs> it means more richly colored fruits and vegetables. We are learning more and more that these different pigments that are in food have different affinities for different parts of our body and they all act a little different as an antioxidant. We, we hear this term antioxidant and we know that it's an umbrella term that signifies a compound protecting our cells from aging and protecting against certain diseases. Uh, but there's different types of antioxidants. There are as many different antioxidants as there are musical instruments. So we need to, to get that full symphony. And one of the best ways to get that full symphony is to eat five servings of richly colored vegetables each day and two servings of richly colored fruit. Now, that sounds like a lot, but a serving is defined as one half cup cooked and one cup uncooked fruit or vegetable. So uh, we should try and, and match 50-50 raw and cooked, but we should try and definitely get that five servings per day of vegetables, two servings of fruit each day. And french fries, potato chips, those don't count as, as vegetables. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Other things that I, that I focus on is that we have to, to, most Americans need to reduce their intake of, of meat and dairy products. We have to eat organic foods. And that's not only true for produce, but also meat and dairy. We have, we have to uh, focus on a high fiber, high water foods, and we have to, to get a high intake of potassium to sodium. That's easily done if you stay away from processed prepared foods. And lastly, you have to consume enough liquids each day. You know, the old the adage of six to eight glasses of water is a very good recommendation on a daily basis. Let's go to number seven. Well, number seven is uh, drinking uh, six to eight glasses of water <laughs> each day. So we, we covered it all. Eat to control high blood, or eat to control blood sugar levels is number one. Number two is eating a rainbow diet, more fruits and vegetables in our diet. Number three is reducing the intake of meat and animal products. Number four is eating um, organic foods, uh, you know, foods that don't have pesticides, herbicides, food coloring agents. Uh, and those are more readily available nowadays I mean, before, you had to really search out those type stores yeah. far and wide. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now, it, just every uh, supermarket has a, a nice organic uh, section. Number six, we have to eat a high potassium, low sodium diet. And number seven, we have to get enough water each day. So those are the, the key dietary uh, recommendations I give in the book. Before we go, in your book, you have a, a compelling story about Anne. Can you take, I mean, this kind of fits into that, what you're saying. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And uh, I was really blessed and had a lot of wonderful patients. And one of my most memorable patients uh, was Anne. She wasn't really my patient. She brought her sister in to see me. And uh, uh, her sister was uh, 63 years of age. And her sister was on 19 different drugs. And her health was in severe jeopardy. I mean, you name it, she was suffering from it. You know, high cholesterol, diabetes, osteoporosis, various digestive disturbances. She was going into kidney and liver failure. She was a mess. And um, I uh, asked her about her sister, because uh, a lot of these conditions you could say are, that she was suffering from, from could have been genetic. So mm -hmm. I was asking her about her sister, and she said, oh, yeah, my younger sister, we, 
we all hate her. And I said, why? I go, and she goes, she's not really our younger sister. She just looks younger. I said, really? Because uh, my patient was 63. I found out that Ann was 74. And after I was finished with my patient, I had Ann come in because I wanted to talk to her. And I'm telling you, she was vibrant. She was coherent. She was on no medications. She told me, she said, I've been a health nut all my life. Yeah. And that's really what got me thinking about this term health nut and how crazy it is. Because uh, I think all of us should be nuts about our health. We should do everything that we can to be as healthy as we can. Because it's not about living longer that health provides. That happens. But it's about living life better now. And that's what I really appreciate now at 51. I'm very happy that I made choices now that I did uh, back then because I built a strong foundation. But I've helped people turn their health around at any age. People just need to start taking the steps in that direction right now. Before we go, you mentioned the term in your book, biochemical individuality. What does that mean? We all are different. We all are different. And it's amazing some of the, the research that's coming out that, that signifies that. What may be beneficial and, and healthy for me uh, with a drug or even a, a dietary approach may, may not necessarily be uh, appropriate for you. And as we learn more about our genomics, we're going to see significant improvements in how we deliver health care, not only with medications, but I think with diet and supplements as well. There's so much more I want to know, but that's all the time we have. Thank well, you. Well, thank you. It's my pleasure. I just want to encourage people out there. You're all faced with choices every day. You need to take personal responsibility for your actions and your decisions, and you need to start building your life so that it's a better life and you enjoy better health. Thank you. That's great advice, Dr. Murray. Thank you so much again. My pleasure. Thank you.